Love Line, Coast to Coast. Hey, Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Fax number 310 854 4455. Dr. Drew, board certified physician. Dick's Nice. I may have some gas tonight, by the way, oh, Drew. Thank you. So, thank, you. Um, thank you for warning me. It'll be something you can look forward to. And, you know, the kids at home mm-hmm. as well. How you doing, Drew? I'm good. How are you? Good times. You got a little wind behind you, a little, little, little momentum behind you, yes? No, I'm tired. Okay. I'm just faking it. Okay. Trying to kickstart myself. All right. Hoping I have something to, <laughs> trying to feign bring you along. Some, trying to feign some enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping to uh, sort of uh, ride along in your atmosphere tonight, uh, Drew. Well, let's talk about cars again. We, we got cut off in the middle of some very important discussion last night. Well, we'll talk during the commercials okay. about right. cars. Right. Rich? Yeah. You're 19? Hey, what's going on, Adam? I love the man show. Why, thank you. Hey, uh, I just wanted to say... That's nice. <laughs> hey, uh, Drew. Yeah. Let's not start with dudes. All right. Good idea. Uh, I mean, have we, have we... It seems like the... Mm, Too many dudes up there. Nine out of the last 11 nights, we started with a dude, and it's been kind of a bust, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And by the way, everybody uh, calling, and I, uh, I think I said this uh, last night, but it deserves saying again, uh, who wants to call on the show and yell out a website address or their address or phone number or radio show to listen to or basically use the show to advertise something, it doesn't work because there's a 10-second delay, and Anderson will just drop it. Yep. So it never gets out. There you go. Matt? Oh, it's a... Wait I, a minute. I, I saw that name. Oh. I thought that was it. Wait, let's try this one. Rebecca. Hold on, Matt. You're being punished for having a penis. Hold <laughs> on. Rebecca? Yeah. Is that uh, how you spell that? Yeah, I guess. You're 15. What's up? Yeah, um, I want to know what the signs for being pregnant were. Uh, you missed your period. Oh, well, I mean... Did you miss your period? Well, no, it hasn't been that long. Mm. How long ago did you have sex? About a week or two ago. Mm, there wouldn't be any symptoms that quick. You wouldn't get any uh, morning sickness or anything like that. Uh, some people claim they do get stuff very quickly, but it really has not been documented that people get stuff that quickly. Uh, you, you might get a little nausea, you might get a little fatigue. But and, and listen, if you're a 42-year-old chick who's had 14 kids and is 300 pounds and can tell mm. when you're pregnant because you've had 14, you know, you've basically had a, a litter, then, then I'll buy it. But at, at 15, I don't think you're going to know unless you miss your period. Miss period, and then you can always get there. So many, so easy to access access pregnancy tests these days. Just go get a pregnancy test if it's been two weeks. Because my boyfriend told me that morning sickness in like a week is normal. Mm, it's a little quick. A little quick. Uh, why? why? What's up with unprotected sex? I don't know. I've just I've always done it. I oh. see. Mm. You're 15. How long have you been doing it? Eight, ten years? <laughs> no, since I've been 12. Mm. And they've always been older guys, so. Nope. What's up, baby? What do you mean? Well, you're getting it on at 12 with uh, guys who are how old? Like the oldest? Okay. 25 was the oldest. Nice. At age 12? Well, not, I was 13 then. Oh, well, wow. if you were 13, that's fine then. I mean, you guys are both mature adults capable of making your own decisions. Oh, I'd like to uh, just take a rusty sprinkler key and basically pin that guy down to a plank. Well, I'm by his scrotum. Oh, good. What's that? You pressing charges? Yeah. Oh, I was okay. in the hospital for an overdose, and uh, okay, it yeah. came out. So I'm doing a polygraph test tomorrow. Good times. Hey, baby. Hmm. Uh, let's not get pregnant, please. <laughs> Just get on birth control. Why? Get is on that, birth control. Why is that I mean, so why difficult? ruin your life, uh, your child's life, and part of society's life? Why? Why put us all through this? Do you really need to ruin it? Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to. Yes, you are, though. You're having sex, and you're not using any protection. So if not pregnant this time, next time. Yeah, if not this week, next week. Yeah. Or maybe you'll get lucky, and you won't get pregnant until June. Yeah. You'll you'll be 15 and three quarters by then. <laughs> Did you know what I mean? Please. H- how do you figure it's not going to happen? Pregnancy. I don't know. I've never gotten pregnant. Yeah, but that's like saying you're 15. Yeah, that's like never. You, you never don't. Been... You don't. You don't have a high school diploma either. Does that mean you'll yeah. never get one? 
You're right. 15. You're, you're never going to turn 16 because you've never been 16 before? You've never been in, in a car accident. You've, you've never twisted your ankle. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you may, not have never, you may not have ever done at 15. doesn't mean it's not going to happen. In fact, this is you may not sprain your ankle, but you are going to get pregnant. Absolutely. And it's gonna, your belly's going to swell more than your ankle. Rebecca, please don't screw things up for, for the long term. Well, and how can I get birth control? Planned Parenthood? Do they get it for free? Uh, they can, yes. Yeah, yeah. Do. Just call, just call, open the phone book and call them tomorrow, please, would you? There's a national no, number. No, she doesn't have the phone. She doesn't have a pen. There are others listening. 1 800 230 PLAN. Okay? Okay. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Oh. She's going to have uh, 17 kids by the time she's 19. Oh. Well, actually, the over-under is 15 and a half kids. What do you go for, Drew? Yeah, 15. Yeah. You're going, oh, you're going under? Yeah. All right. Leanne? Yeah? You're 18? Yes, sir. What's up? Yes, sir. Wow. That's what I like. <laughs> you calling from Tennessee? Uh-huh. I like that. I like when people uh, do that yes, sir, no, sir from the uh, south. Southern. That's good. Good times, Ellie Mae. What's up? <laughs> Ellie Mae. <laughs> wow, you Whoa, do you sound Ellie like May. Ellie Mae. Hey. Uh, say that again. Uh, uh, Leanne, I'm going to give you a sentence to repeat, all right? All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what was the guy who owned Jeff the bank Rob. in the Beverly Hillbillies? Mr. Mr. Drysdale. Mr. Drysdale, yeah. Say, uh, Pa, Mrs. Drysdale standing by the cement pond. Mr. Oh, Mrs. Drysdale standing by the cement pond. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Go get Jethro. Go get Jethro. You want me to say that? Yeah. Go get Jethro. <laughs> 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 say uh, one more thing. <laughs> Granny's making possum stew. You Granny's right? making possum stew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's good times, baby. What's going on, man? Anyway, um, okay, I'm, I've been going out with this guy for, well, since I was 14. And, no, I mean, I'm not pregnant or anything, yeah. so you don't have to, like, come up with any jokes about mm -hmm. it. But how, how old is he? How old is he? He's 20. All right. Um, we're getting married in July. Mm. And, I mean, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I've smoked a lot of weed, like, like it used to be a lot like everyday thing mm -hmm. and now we're both in college so i mean it's like just a lot of things but mostly just weed and i just wanted to know like if i wanted to have kids later what i mean i don't get i don't get high as much as i used to but i do every once in a while like maybe once a week well if you w and i wanted to know if it would like bother like i mean we're not having kids anytime soon I so, mean, so hang, hang on a couple of questions so your, your mom or your dad was an alcoholic uh-huh yeah both. And, and and this is about alcoholism here. You've just you've just you chosen the drug of marijuana to express this disease with, and I'm sure you're drinking or doing something else on the drug days when you're not doing pot right now, right? Uh huh. Yeah. And the reason you're not doing so much pot is it doesn't work so well anymore. And that's what happens with pot after many years of heavy use is it, it starts making you depressed and irritable, and you start getting forgetful and have trouble initiating tasks, and then you switch over to something else: alcohol, speed. Yeah. And that makes all that better. Now, do you drink? Do you drink out of a cider jug or is it a regular, regular tumbler? Oh, long neck. All right, Leanne. Le <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> so, Leanne, here's the deal: is that uh, yes, uh, the use of pot doesn't affect pregnancy unless you're already pregnant. And the same thing is true of all. I mean, like in the long term, it won't like bother my body any, right? Uh, well, yes, it will bother your body a great deal, but it will not bother a pregnancy. And the problem is, you have addiction, and that's going to progress. And you're going to have a 50% probability of passing that predisposition on to your children. Your, your having the disease is going to affect your kid's emotional health. And I suggest if you're going to have a pregnancy that you really look into getting treatment for addiction before you go ahead with this. Because it can have, you're going to have a difficult time stopping even during a pregnancy. What, uh, what month are you getting married? July. July. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, they Good say luck, like a, it's like a July is pronounced uh, like they're describing a rabbi who can't tell the truth. <laughs> Jew lie. <laughs> Jew <laughs> lie. <laughs> Woo -wee. All right, we're going to go to Matt here. Mm -hmm. Matt? Hey, what's up, Jew? What's up, Adam? You're Matt. 22. What's going I think on? Matt's our first male, so don't let us down, Matt. Yeah, I heard, uh, you know, having a penis kind of killed my whole thing about the first call. But uh, my ex now came up, went to the gynecologist, and 
they found genital warts on her. Mm-hmm. And I've been monogamous with her for the last four years. Um, but, I but, both, but both of you had been sexually active prior. Yes. So one of you brought this right. in, brought it to the table here. Right now, I went to the doctor, I got checked out, and he said there's nothing to show for it right now. I would still assume that you could be contagious with this. Okay, and... Um, How'd he check you? Uh, with gloves. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't do the acetic acid dip? No. That Adam... Uh, and the black light? Yeah. No. No. That Adam suffered through? Uh, oh, oh yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I just dumped acid all over my penis. Yeah. That's yeah. me. Yeah, that's what happened. Way to go, Adam. Yeah. But uh, I was wondering if, uh, I mean, can it stay dormant for four years? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, mm-hmm. what... Oh, you mean you're worried that she went out and had cheated? Yeah. Uh, she goes to college. The, I, I don't think you can build that case. Really. Right. And I haven't been able yeah. to at all. Yeah. So. so. Um, and then another question is, <laughs> what's the best way to, like, if I get in a relationship down the road? The yeah. new one? Wear a condom. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute, though. He went to a doctor. The guy checked it out. Uh, and I, he's talking to another doctor, me, who's telling him that he might well be contagious. Yeah, but you're right. like you're the love doctor. You don't really know what you're doing. Well, that's what I. That's what I'm. Well, how about give, how about getting the acetic acid test? Oh, well, go back to the doctor and ask for that, or what? It's still not 100. percent But uh, no. uh, is uh, thanks. It's not. Uh, hold on a second. It's reassuring, on, Drew. It's, it's, I, I now know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you have genital warts because you will not rest until the entire planet goes down your genital warted path with no, you. He's having sex Every, with a It's like he got a guy, warts. went to a doctor, had his uh, pecker checked out. He said no. I said, how about this other test? You say he's still going to have it. Yeah, but here's the story we're describing is a guy who's having sex with a woman with genital warts. That means he has them. Um, it's it's that contagious. But let me let me float this. Yeah. Some people won't get it. Some people won't. And if he's had sex with somebody for who's had it for th- theoretically four years and has not had any outbreaks, and the doctor's not you know has cleared him, then mm-hmm. me he may not have it in his system to get mm-hmm. from I, her I, that strain. I wouldn't personally wouldn't clear someone just because of the story. I know, but you saying just put a condom on and don't worry about it for the rest of your life kind of thing is not realistic. I mean, you have to play the odds. Mm. It's easy for you. You're covered and you ain't wearing the condom and you're not boffing his uh, girlfriend. But that's not, you know, realistic advice. Uh, you, you have to whittle it down to, a to you know, a reasonable doubt. Or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it is playing the odds that's caused me to say, go ahead and wear the condom. You don't have, it's not have to, and he has done, you know, he would be justified in not. I agree with you on that point. No, no but, breakouts, and the doctor gave him, gave him the all clear sign. But uh, maybe boy. you should get that acetic acid test. Yeah. All right. all right, we'll do that and see what happens. And I don't know what he's doing. He's shopping around. He's looking, you know, he's like, hey, uh, Wart Queen, <laughs> I'm moving on. All right, let's talk to Michael. Uh, hello? Hey, hello? Hey, guys, what's up? Hey, you're 16. What's going yes, on? I am. Uh, Adam, let me just say, I think the man show is God's gift to humanity. Thank you. Um, there's kind of been this uh, rumor passed down from uh, senior year to senior year that this certain science teacher at my school is a porn star. Yeah. Uh, and I thought if, if anyone could, like, you know, identify him, it would be you because you've probably yeah. seen more porn than anyone. How old a guy is he? Um, I would say now he's he's in his forties or something, and mm-hmm. he he kind of I I think he has like Tourette syndrome. Mm-hmm. Like Why he, he has like this this twitch in his shoulder, mm. maybe from like one too many orgasms or something. Sure, it could happen. Mm. Um, but most, I don't know, porn stars go on and on and on. Yeah, you know what I mean, what's their convention? The, the male one, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm you know it's possible he just did this to. Get through college or something. Yeah. What uh, describe the guy for me? Well, can I like say his name on? on no. Your... No, because no. if he's a, what, what do you think he's going by? Uh, Dick Nibbler. Well, no. His, uh, supposedly his porn name is Larry Longrod. No. No. No, I don't. <laughs> Larry Longrod. Listen, that's no porn star name. And, uh, no prolific guy. He 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 didn't do too many movies. Yeah. Larry Longrod. <laughs> What's my uh, porn name? Oh, um, 
Uh, the great Spudini. Oh, yes, yeah, Spudini, of course. Yeah, cape. You know what I mean? A uh, sort of Zorro, sort of like outfit I see for the great Spudini. Of course. <laughs> Mark? Uh, yeah, I... My problem is actually a lie. I just made it up because I've been calling for the past couple nights. All right. Well, I'm sorry because we have to hang up on you because uh, too much we're getting too many of those. Yeah, yeah. Too many... No, too many, yeah, too many I made this call up so I could get on the air and talk to you. And then we usually talk to the people, mm -hmm. but it, it does kind of get us more of those calls. Yeah. So, as cruel as it is, Mark's going to have to take one for the team. Tasha? Hello? The greater good. Well, You're 15, what's up? Yeah, um, if I, I don't know if I'm pregnant or not, but if I want an abortion, because, like, you know, I'm, like, Catholic and, like, captain of the dance team at my private Catholic high school. Slow down. Yeah, do you need parental consent, especially if, like, my boyfriend's, like, 21? Uh, I think the only time that requires... Oh, boyfriend's 21. Yeah. <laughs> what a dynamite, uh, dynamite yeah. individual. I'd love to get to know him better. I, I don't know that you need parental consent for the abortion, but uh, he, I imagine he would be reported for his behavior. Uh, well, the, do, do they, they don't need to know who dad is. Yeah, I don't think so. All right. And I think he, uh, the only way your parents get involved is if you ask for payment from their insurance or them. Okay. What are you doing bopping around with a 21-year-old? I don't know. We're in love. <laughs> you really? Yeah. What's uh, he do? Some form of construction? What? No. He doesn't work. No, he goes to school right now. Junior college? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shocking. <laughs> Unbelievable. No. I tell you, you just it it uh, it it smells Reeks. like Limburger that uh, junior college. I can smell it on a guy. Oh, oh you, you name me, you name me the activity. I'll tell you where he's at on the educational pecking order, and uh, that that uh, banging, uh, un un unprotected, un mm. unprotected sex with a fifteen-year-old. That's junior college right there. But he's going into the navy. <laughs> oh, yeah, actually. I, I do stand correct that it is somewhere between the service and junior college. Okay, so this is this is down the food chain of ways. Junior college is stupid and unmotivated. The service is sort of criminal behavior, and so that's kind of right. That's kind of right in between. It's a nice mixture of both. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully they uh, ship him off somewhere, and he gets. Uh, he he goes to some Bangkok whorehouse and his pecker falls off in a year. Oh that's as from a societal standpoint. That's what we can really hope, hope oh. for. But but Adam, tell us how you really feel about this guy. Don't hold back. It just, just <laughs> don't you think it's all right for guys like this to get you know yeah, shot the, by friendly fire yeah. on the on a shooting range or something? I mean, isn't that going to sort of help things along? The, the, you think he's going to invent something the or discover the cure to something, Drew? It, it's not going to be until Tasha's twenty three or twenty two that she's able to look back on this and, and feel as you do. Yeah. No, I don't know. We're in love. No, no, no. No, well, what happens when he ships out with the Navy? I don't know. He's not going until April 30th. I know that seems like a world away for, for you, but that's, uh, that's a few weeks, really. I know. In, in real time. I know. <laughs> well, he's going to go away for the Navy, right? I know. But, I don't know. He said he'll come back to visit me. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. A yeah. couple of years. Yeah, but I don't know. It's just that, like, if I am pregnant, then like, I no one, I can't be, and no one can find out because I'm going to like Harvard. <laughs> like, I don't know. Mm, you're into Harvard at 15. Well, no, I want to. I'm planning to. Yeah, I thought it, I I had it narrowed down between uh, Brown and Yale at 15. Ended up at Valley Junior College. Oh, no way, no. Yeah, playing softball with a bunch of retards. No. Yeah. I'm like captain of the dance team. Yeah, hold on a second, Dasha. Okay. Captain of the dance team. <laughs> you, you may be getting a little too much mileage out of that captain of the dance team. No, and I have 4.3. Are you doing advanced placement classes? Oh, hold on. Wait a minute. How many? Uh, um, I'm taking honors Spanish and AP European history. And wait a second. Wait a second. You have a 4.3? Yeah, something like that. A pluses. Uh, but I have like some, like my AP class is really bad right now. Does that count for more? Well, how, how do you get higher than a four? Which you got you got to take all AP classes and get really good grades in them. That, that's how the Ivy League really judges. Yeah, I understand. Understand, so. They go by. Um, all right. <laughs> well, I'm not going to sit down and go over the uh, PSAT with you, too. Okay. Go get that abortion. <laughs> get it? 4.3. Uh, yeah. How do they have a, over four for GPA? Because California. Classes, you get an extra point. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. 
go go down to Planned Parenthood and uh, talk to the nice people over there. Okay, like how much is like an abortion? Mm. I don't know offhand. You don't know. Uh, what is but, it? And now there's are you forty six and other things to make. Yeah, see about that. Okay. There are more. There are abortion pills now you could take, which is different than the morning after pill, which is something you shouldn't leave without. Uh huh. But then again, I'm like Catholic, and I go to like a private Catholic high school. And <laughs> hey, do you do you uh, hate your parents or something? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why well, yeah. you, you seem like you're screwing with them a little bit? You got a little bit of an eating disorder? Uh, no. Hmm. No. Okay. Never had any food issues. Oh no. Okay. Say hi to the rest of the dance team, huh? <laughs> They're good, okay. All right. Well, my mom's like uh, like a social worker, clinical social worker. <laughs> well, good. Don't talk to her. No, I know. <laughs> hey, yeah, hey yeah, do you, that's, that's you guys point. on that dance team, do you have those uh, fake wooden guns that are cut out of two-by-fours? No, that's color guard. That's not oh. dance team. Wait, why, why don't you talk to your mom about what's going on here? I mean, nope. Does she know you're dating a 21-year-old? No. Why don't you talk to your mom a little bit? I can't tell my mom that. Why? Because my mom and me are... We don't get along so well. All right. Well, All right. That's what Adam asked it. you. Yeah, that's what Adam asked at the beginning. But no. I, I would suggest talk to your parents. Yeah, but go to go to Planned Parenthood. And what about that color guard, Drew? Mm. You think it's a great plan to uh, take kids and make representations of uh, like bolt action M1 rifles and then send them down the middle of the playing field with them, throwing them over their head? Aren't you taught to be careful with a gun? <laughs> I thought the whole thing with a gun was you always pointed it down. You never pointed it at anybody. You know, people freak out. Like, I don't care if there's a round in there or the clip's out or the safety's on. You always point it toward the ground. You keep it in a, you keep it locked up in a safe. You never handle it with children around. Yep. You, you, special handling. When you carry it, you put it in the gun case, put it in the back of your car, yep. in the trunk, all that stuff. Why are we sending kids with those uh, M1 rifles running down the middle? I mean, I know they're fake. But that seemed like kind of a mixed message. Hey, take this gun, spin it over your head, and then throw it 30 feet in the air and catch it again. It's kind of weird, isn't it? I think it's tradition. Tradition? That's pageantry is what I'm saying. I see. Okay. We'll take ourselves a little break. You don't find that ironic, do you, Drew? That we are so uptight about guns, then we throw them over our heads? Yeah. Seems like they should get back the batons. That's all I'm yeah. saying. Especially with all the school shootings. Well, I mean, the whole thing. Please, uh, didn't uh, isn't wasn't that sort of a marine thing, or at least a high uh, military pageantry? Now we have uh, women. Yeah, doing, we have fourteen year old chicks marching uh, up and down at halftime yeah. of the high school football the game. The whole thing is bizarre. So. Okay, let's do away with that. When we come back, we'll speak to Carlos. Nineteen long distance relationship, first time in love. She's in Mexico. They want to stay together. We'll get to him after this. Hit the love line. I'm Adam. That's my uh, confidant, my friend, my partner, my lover. Dr. Drew over there, y'all. Confidant. <laughs> well, it's true. We do talk about stuff. Yeah. Phone number 1-800. Actually, I talk. You listen. Yeah. Phone number 1-800. Thank you for noticing. L-O-V-E-191. Well, I'm a talker, Drew. Yeah, no kidding. That's why I got the gig. Mm. Except when you're around people. Yo, know, I don't like people. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I'm going to be one of those crazy old guys with uh, 700 cats who talks to them yeah, yeah. all day. Mm. I can see it coming. <laughs> you hate cats, too. How dare you? You don't hate cats? I loved my cat Norman and Kitty very much. They were both uh, darling, darling animals. You had a cat named Kitty? Kitty. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It was Kitty, I think it's, you know, like Kitty Carlisle, not, you know, not, Kitty, not Cat. Kitty Cat. Yeah. You know, I did uh, an Animal Planet show last week. And I, wow. I, yeah. What the what? hell is going on with you? What? Did you get a publicist? No. Something happened. What's going on with you? You're whoring all over the place. No, the You're hanging out with Michael man. Jackson. You're on the Animal Planet. You're with Bill Maher at UCLA. Where aren't you? <laughs> Are you done, mister? Yeah. Anyway, so I, I did this interview. I realized in the course of the interview that I a long history of animal with weird name. I mean, you do. Yeah, every every family pet has had some weird ass name. What were your uh, What were the names? We had like the kitty things that remind me. We had boy kitty and girl kitty. That's what they called them. Yeah, I had a dog that I named Sweetie. Sweetie. Wait a minute. This this gets better. Turn him gay. We inherited a poodle. So, somebody. Ooh. Wait, wait, wait. It was, it was a great poodle. It was really intelligent, yeah. well trained. Wait, no. wait. It wasn't groomed. It was like shaved. It was like it didn't even look like a poodle. But no. his name or her name, Poopsie, already named. 
Just, I uh, mean, can you imagine that? You're like one of the Gabor sisters. Uh, Who did you grow up with? Ava or Zsa Zsa? <laughs> Which one was your How mom? How is that? Now, we have a cat named Pee-wee and Vern. Did you have a... I mean, what's wait, that dog ears? What's that thing called? N- Nico. Someone needs to take like a nice... Uh, mm, say five iron to that dog. <laughs> Just send him into the neighbor's yard. <laughs> really should. That little worthless mutt. You know what we named that one after? What you named that dog after? Yeah, so Susan brought the dog home. The kids were like hugging it, you know, squeezing it. She goes, oh my God, you guys are going to lo- love that dog to death. She goes, oh, I got the name for the dog. Nicole Brown. Oh, oh sure. Nicole. my God. <laughs> you have no couth at all. Just weird yeah. ass I, animals. I begged for a dog uh, every day for five years, but uh, my uh, my family was so like... I, I guess uh, I guess Are I should have complained. Are you kidding? Yeah, they all, all, the, all the the care that they had uh, left over, <laughs> they, 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 whatever they were throwing out there for you would have just got yeah, tossed that, over the that's dog. That's all you that's need it. to know about my family. The dog way too tall in order. It's like, <laughs> are you kidding? Food every day and uh, clean up the crap once a month out of the backyard. Impossible. Carlos, yes, you're 19. Yes, hi. What's up? Oh um, yes, you have the long distance relationship. Right, um, I've been with this girl since January the 5th. I asked her to be my girlfriend. We kissed the first time, third, January the 3rd. Oh, my and, God. Uh, Hold on, a guy who I've remembers known... dates? So... Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I have it on my calendar and everything. And, um, uh-huh. it's not gay or anything like that. <laughs> no, yeah. We know. <laughs> it will be. But, um, okay, no. Uh, I've known her for like a year. I met her through my cousin when I went to Mexico last year. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, I've had... Two girlfriends before her. Mm-hmm. Did you have the dates and, written down when you kissed those two also? <laughs> I mean, I thought I was in love with them. So, yeah. you know, I think I'm in love with this girl. I think he's in love with being in love, don't you, Adam? Yes. Yeah. The, the difference between this girl and the other ones is that I haven't cheated on this one, you know, and I, I'm not going to cheat on her because I love her, you know? You love her. It's pure romantic. That's how, that's how I felt in the beginning with oh, the other I, girls. Hang a second, Carlos. I'm just imagining, what was the guy's name on the Flying Nun that was the... Uh, Carlos, the bachelor yeah, from Puerto Rico. Yes, yes. So, what do you think of him? Yeah, same name. Huh? Hey, Carlos? Yes. Um, what part of Mexico is she in? Um, I don't want to say because if my friends are listening, they're going to be like... Mm. Uh, this is Carlos, my friend. Uh, well, yeah. making fun of me for like the rest of my life. Uh, well, why? Because you're in love. That's fine. Is she near the border? Uh, oh, she's in La Paz, Baja California. She's studying there. She's dorming there. Okay, I'll just say it. Oh, well, hold on. They have colleges there. Yeah, she's from. Actually, no she's idea. from Mazatlan, Sinaloa. Oh yeah, that's where my she, family's from. Yeah, really. Uh, no. she went to La Paz because that's where they offer. Uh, what she wants to... I see. What is she, I see. All right. Well, what's your, what is your question? How then? old is she? Uh, she's nine, She's 18. Okay. Well, is so she... my question... Yeah. Yeah, question. My question is, do you really... Do you really think it's going to work? Do you really think a long-distance relationship can work? Because, I mean, I've been hearing from my friends that it's not going to work out, and I've known other relationships that don't yeah. work out. Yeah. What's your sort of life plan in terms of marriage? When do you want to get married? When do I want to get married? Yeah. After I finish my... After I'm settled with a good job, you know? Like, you're, like you're 25, something like that? Around, yeah, around 25. Do you want to date her for six years? You want to sort of all, all the way through college and all the way through... Well, he's not going to college. I, right now, I, yes, I do. I, I like her a lot. Yeah. Well, no, but, well, wait a minute. True, don't sour the uh, boy on no, the I'm just young lady. Asking, no, no, no. I'm just asking if that's what he wants to do. Does he want to sacrifice his college time? and Sacrifice nothing. Sacrifice, no. You're not, Carlos, you're not going to college, right? Yes, I am. Junior college, though, right? No, no, I'm um, university. I'm going Cal- to school right now. Cal State. Where? Cal State. Northridge? I'm not gonna, it's a university. I'm not going to say where I'm going. What I'm kind of school? school? He's in California. It's a private school. It's in California. Private school. For welding. Okay, Carlos. Yes. Um, is she going to come to the United States? Can she come to the United States? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't... Are I would you, like that, but I'm not going to, like, force her to come here. Anymore. Are, are you going to Mexico? I mean, how are you going to see her? <laughs> how are you going to maintain oh, I, I this? Saw, I saw her once already. I, I went oh, all right. Well, if you oh, saw her. One time, sure. That's that can yeah, sustain gonna a life. Go, I'm going to go in April 7th on our, on our vacations, too. Okay. Okay. Why don't you... Why don't you go once a week, all right, once listen. Now, Klaus, why don't you at least agree that you're going to try to maintain a relationship, but you'll see other people? No, no, It no, sounds no, very unrealistic. No, no, no. What? No. He's going there April 7th or something, right? Right. You're going in April. Right. So, 
communicate with her on the phone or through email or through letters or yeah. whatever way you want to communicate for the next month and a half or month or however what the hell we are a month and a half away yeah. and then go see her in april and see how it goes he'll probably knock her off and they'll you know stay yeah, in mexico yeah, but, but, but uh, the the point is is just, look Give, you're, you're four or five weeks away. Just, you know, don't date anybody for the next four or five weeks. Talk yeah, to yeah. her. Go over there and see how it feels. But this thing is so much built on fantasy. They've like, met like He's not months. doing anything anyway. Mm. Veronica, you Hi. get so uptight. Just let him go see her in April. Uh, you're 19. I didn't What's tell going him not on? to. I just said just loosen up a little bit and don't oh be so gosh. fixated in this thing. What's up, Veronica? I think my stomach just like, oh, wow. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Um, this is really embarrassing for me, actually. Um, 19, and I, I have not experienced uh, an orgasm yet. Many, many I've many. had. That's common. Common at 19. Is that common? Yep. Okay, good. Because I was really getting getting kind of scared. I had a boyfriend for about a year. Jeez, yeah, that to me that that's I find that disturbing. That women, you know, having normal sexual functioning because the information out there is so pathetic, yeah. they have to feel like there's something faulty about them, something wrong if they're not just it, it functioning just like a 19 year old male, basically. Well, I did not see. I have not seen any uh, like publications about you know orgasms, whatever. It's just me. Like I, I just didn't experience it, so I was just wondering if there's something wrong or. No. I was like thinking the most weird things in my mind, like are are all the 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 like the nerves and the that area okay? Or? Yeah. Are, are you hooked up properly? More like you have a. Uh, uh evil elves uh -huh. inside your vagina that are blocking the orgasm <laughs> oh, no. from coming down the pipe. Adam, Adam be, be serious. I believe they're trolls. Trolls. Not elves. Gnomes. Yeah. yeah. Veronica, yeah. Uh, are you sexually active? Uh, not anymore. I had a boyfriend for about a year. Why bother? Have you tried masturbating? Yeah, and I, the orgasms I get from that are last two to three seconds. It's so embarrassing to say out loud. Oh, my God. So you do get orgasms? Yeah, but they're like... They're not, I don't know what would be classified as an orgasm. Like most of my friends who've had them say they last 30 minutes to an hour or what? or 20 to, 20, 20 to 15 minutes or whatever. What? Or they don't know what the hell they're talking I, about. Obviously yeah. not. But um, no, unless they're multiple uh, orgasms. Hold on. No, no, two to three seconds is nothing. Come on. The, the, the feeling that I get that two to three seconds is amazing. I want that feeling to last longer. Hold on a second. Uh, hold, hold on, on a, a second. second. Now there's a different misconception going on here. What planet is Veronica <laughs> and her friends from? <laughs> no. What the hell is going on? It's where they have a planet where they have orgasmatrons. What how do you what how do you get this way? She says she doesn't have orgasm. She's never had an orgasm. She, she She's meant, desperate to experience an yeah. orgasm. Then she goes on to say, well, she has had orgasms, but they only go on a couple of seconds, whereas her friends are having orgasms that go on a half hour. And then she then sort of adjusted that down to 15 or 20 minutes, which is uh, still a lifetime in terms of any kind of function. And now uh, says she's not having or is having... Uh, what 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 are her I, friends I talk she, about? I think, I think she meant she wasn't having orgasms during sex, which yeah, would be I, normal. I meant that I'm having the two to three second orgasms when I'm masturbating. I have not. Right, had I understand that. I understand that. Okay. But understand that's an orgasm. Okay. And that's how long orgasms last. No. Yes. No. Yes, and that some women are multi orgasmic and can go on for a little while, but but that's very small percentage. That's so disappointing. Well, you think an orgasm goes on for 20 minutes? Uh, well, that's I've heard this everywhere. I mean, I have not heard any other place that Yeah, but but Veronica. Veronica. Okay. You hang around with some pretty dim folks. <laughs> I mean, your friends are idiots, right? Oh, thank you. That's no, seriously. <laughs> I mean, they're they're all kind of numbskulls. Are you in school now? Yeah. Where do you go to school? Uh, Santa Monica. Junior college. Junior college. Well, actually, I got it. I, I applied to USC, but I applied too late. They they would have. Yeah, we're not we're not worried about you. We're, we're assessing your friends. No, I am. Yeah. <laughs> like, so well, okay, then I don't have any friends at, um, at Santa Monica because all my friends are not are not in LA. I'm not from LA, so. Junior college is junior college. No, all my don't oh, ignore don't that's ignore not, that. That's not right. You guys do that though. Where are you oh, from? Yeah, it is. I, all my friends do not go to Santa Monica. I don't have any. I, I know. Here. Where I, are they from? The, where are they from? I have friends who go to Columbia, Brown, no. UW, Cal. The, no. That talk about no, you this. Know. I mean, no, so you know. even no, the, if they did go to junior college, that's not fair. Do you yes, yes. I, how come I always know junior college? 
Okay, well, that was kind of funny what you said earlier about the okay. guy in the Navy. All right, funny for, funny for them, but not funny for you. Okay. There's no half-hour orgasm. Maybe they're multi-orgasmic. Maybe they're having a couple orgasms in a session. Maybe they have just a very heightened sort of arousal state that's going on right. where they're feeling very and, sensitive and, and, and you know, sensational. It makes me wonder if the ones that are saying that even have orgasm. They may not be even... They may that not. is a very valid point because uh, if you knew what an orgasm was, clearly you'd know it didn't go on for longer than three or four seconds. Yeah. Tops... Therefore, they can't be having them. Right. So maybe they're the ones who ha aren't having the orgasms. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, you'll find a nice guy. He'll perform oral sex on you, and you'll have your three-second orgasm with him. Okay? Mm. Okay, baby. <laughs> okay. Hey, that's life. Yeah. What? We just burst at Veronica's big O bubble. Yeah. Did you really think that you were going to experience the sensation of an orgasm for 15 or 20 minutes. Do you, do you realize that your head would pop off and blood would just go shooting out? I mean, do you realize what an or... It, it'd be like getting an electric shock for yeah. 15 minutes. Right. The sensation of an orgasm for 30 seconds solid would be a lifetime. Right. I mean, you'd be convulsing. They'd have to put <laughs> paddles on you to restart you. People don't realize what even... You know, oh. 15 or 30 seconds is much less 15 minutes. I know. I, I, I'll tell you, everybody, you really want to appreciate time? Get in a boxing ring and go three minutes, one round with a guy who's really badass. You'll know how long three minutes is, and you'll be able to do the math from there. Well, I, I just wonder what else. I just, I just wonder what else wouldn't, in wouldn't life. Foam just be coming out of your mouth. What, and your what you, eyes rolled behind yeah, your head. Yeah. What do you think else in life, though, Veronica? Which is a wonderful thing that Veronica finds insufficient. <laughs> I, I mean, is there a wonderful dinner? You have to sit down and eat again. Where does it stop? No, I could see her. I could see her at the uh, at the Baskin Robbins at yeah, the ice cream store. That it? Uh, you got you got uh, fudge and double fudge. Is there triple fudge? <laughs> No, I'm sorry. Oh, Christ, I've got to kill myself. I need a Xanax. All right, we're going to take ourselves a break. We'll uh, get back with uh, Jessica and her Prozac after this. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right, baby. It's the love line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's my part over there. My homie. My uh, cuz. Your confidant. That was the one I liked. My confidant. So I, I somehow, that somehow made me feel like Agent 99 or something. My muse over there, Dr. Drewski. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Newfound glory coming in here a little bit uh, later this week. Jamie Presley, the uh, good-looking blonde from... Uh, the trailer park. No. What's that show called? Mike and Ike? But she did that. She played that what? trailer park chick in the... Uh, yeah. Yeah, you've seen her in all Jerry the Spring pinup movie. magazines yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Jack and Jill, yeah, she'll be uh, she'll be in here. Bill Maher, he's going to be in here. Little uh, reunion from uh, Temptation Island, uh, Mighty Mighty Boston's, which is uh, something I'm very excited about because, uh, as you know, we I haven't love seen the band. him in a while. Dickie. No, I uh, spoke to Dicky uh, a couple months ago. I think it's the last time I talked to him and uh, Jake Busey. And, well. and who's coming from Temptation Island? Why don't you, hey, good radio. Shannon and Andy. With Andy. Shannon and Andy. Which one are they? Is that the husband and wife? Okay, Drew. I mean, the, the, the couple? Just yeah, the couple. Stop it, yeah, Drew. Yeah. Drew, why don't you wait till at least Ann's facing this way near the right. microphone before you ask reality, her a question on Reality right radio, dude. I, <laughs> it certainly is. Okay, would you get your answer there? Yeah, actually, I, they Who were on, they were on Mars Venus with us. All right, Shannon and Andy, they're very nice. You know them? Yep. Okay, good times. Jessica. Yeah. Hi. You're 16. What's think, up? I think those um, two. Okay. No, well, you I, have, work. I have a problem. All I right. just started taking a pill like three days ago. Birth control pill. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I've been like throwing up and really nauseous. Did you talk to your doctor? Well, no. He's well. Well, they said that it's a side effect. Yeah, but you shouldn't but, have intolerable vomiting. That's just impossible. That's you're not on the right pill then. Which one are you on? Um, ortho tricycline. Yeah, you might have to be on a lower dose estrogen pill. That that's a good pill, but yeah. it may not be the right one for you. 
He said that that's like the best out there, but it, it's a great pill, but it may not be the right one for you. You're having the symptoms of excess estrogen and this may not go away yes it might but it might not in which case you can't go through life vomiting every day that's, that's not one of the, the side effects you should have to tolerate with this pill leslie yeah what's up there sister you're 26 i am 26 mm -hmm. and i'm having orgasms that last an hour or more man i don't know about you <laughs> no you're not yeah i am you're having I don't multiple have them every day um, but they do happen. For people who practice, who practice Tantra, who no. learn about controlling the muscles... Oh, no, you wicked hippie freaks. Controlling the muscles of the vagina or the penis, it's very possible to have orgasms that last an hour or more. Well, no. listen, it's, it's, it's possible to believe you're Napoleon, too. <laughs> it doesn't mean you're Napoleon, does it? No, and dressing up in a funny hat won't get you there. But learning something about sexuality and about the practice of good sex will radically enhance your sex life. It'll radically enhance your ability to have orgasms, the frequency of orgasm, the duration of orgasm. It's yeah. very possible to improve on the three to five second bang. All right, but let me ask you this. Sure. Why, why don't I trust any of you people? Why do I think there's something wrong with all of you? I don't know. Why do you think there's something wrong with us? I'd imagine it's because you're not having great sex. Turn your, uh, how dare you, by the way? How <laughs> dare you call me in my studio and attack my sexuality? I'm not attacking your sexuality. Call, I'm, hey, turn your radio I'm down. Opposite. Hey, Leslie. goofball, turn that radio down. The radio's turned down, I'm sorry. Thank you. Now, you do that tantric sex, or you, you work on the tantric exercises and I everything? I work on tantric exercises. And here's a here's a, a topic for the, one of the Sunday shows, right? And, yeah, and how does that work? Well, there are a variety of exercises that can be done in several different traditions. Tantra is one of them. Mm -hmm. they, how often do you do these exercises? Daily. Mm -hmm. okay. And how long do you spend on your, let's say, the left side of your vagina? Actually, um, there are a series of contractions and releases that I do. I do them daily for about 20, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I also do daily meditations mm -hmm. to work with my awareness of energy, my awareness of physical sensation, right. uh, my awareness of emotional sensation, to be able to expand my capacity uh, for enjoyment and pleasure in sexuality. I, I work on this every day. And um, you were molested for 14 years? I was up? never molested. What's up with you? What's up with me is I enjoy good sex. I'm interested yeah, in no, but can't, can't, I'm interested in learning right. about and practicing good sex. I, I understand that, but I don't know. Isn't there something just kind of fun and innocent about having a good romp? There is a anyway, fun I mean, about having a good romp, and sometimes a good romp is what you're in the mood for, and that's great, and, and, and I'm all for it. And, and when you have these hour-long... Why do I think Leslie's just nuts? But why is that? But Hold on a second, Drew. You know... It, are we jealous and defensive? Do you, you know what I mean? Why does it smack of nuts to us when somebody wants to work on their sexuality this way? Be, why does because, that smell so... Why is it so wrong to because me? Because it's like trying to work on Chateaubriand. It's like, this is inadequate. We must make it so much better. I mean, the Chateaubriand you've been eating, you have no idea. We can make it so much better and because you're not paying enough attention to it. It's like, hey, it's, and, it's fabulous. And how, I, how much I, more fabulous do I need it to be? I always find it insulting slash condescending when people tell you what you're missing out on and what your life could be and what their life is. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, I don't know why I find it uh, very bothersome. For my <laughs> but, intention to do that. But Leslie, when, when you have the when you have the one hour orgasms, um, anything else going on in your life at that time? Well, generally, if I have an orgasm of that level of intensity, it's with someone who I really care about. Okay. Who I have a strong. And is it multiple? With. You're having multiple uh, orgasms. Oh yes. You're having multiple orgasms. Oh yes. What's All right. The, so you're multiple orgasmic. I mean, what, not every woman is multiple orgasmic. Not every woman is multi-orgasmic. So that's different though, than having... Women have the capacity for multiple that's orgasms. That's different than having a single orgasm that lasts an hour. That's yes. very, very different. Very, very different. I have had single orgasms that have lasted 45 minutes to an hour. Wait. Are you multi-orgasmic? I am also multi-orgasmic, yes. All right. Well, and, and, listen, Drew, you can... With a woman... Sometimes, yes, it's difficult to distinguish between the, pe the peaks and the falls, but... Uh, let me tell you, when you have an orgasm that lasts for 45 minutes, you know it. Yeah. Right. What does the guy do at that point? He just leave uh, 20 bucks on you and uh, pull his pants up and hit, hit the El Certainly Camino? Not. Certainly not. And What's the guy doing? We have extended orgasms as well. No. Generally not no. To, uh, to quite the same length that no. women have. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Is fluid coming out of the penis for 15 minutes? No, generally All right. not. Then forget Done. it. Done. Then forget it. Done.
We're not interested in anything else. That right. that ain't an orgasm. That's the sensation you've talked yourself into after you're done having the orgasm that makes you believe that it's continuing. No, it's a method of muscle contraction, actually. <laughs> it's a method of deliberately holding the All right. It really, there's nothing... That sex isn't good and as it is. Huh? Sex is great as it is, but there's no reason not to increase your intimacy, to increase your physical pleasure, uh, okay. your emotional pleasure, by understanding the way your body works. All right, baby. I'm just too tired for all. I just want a sleeping pill and like a <laughs> tall boy, and I'm just going to jack off and call it. But a you, night, you right? smoke well, cigarettes. Some evenings, that's Leslie, what you, you, want, you smoke. Know? You smoke cigarettes, right? Uh, I do sometimes smoke Yeah, you <laughs> smoke cigarettes. I mean, what the F? You know, it's like that, that is rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. You know, oh, I'm tuned into my body and I'm taking such good care of it. And, and I'm addicted to tobacco. Oh, Give that's, me an F it's always break. nonsense. That's why. That's why I hate these people. I really do hate them. Well, one last question, I know. Hey, Leslie? Leslie? Are you there? You into, are you into that feng shui at all? Um, yeah. I wouldn't say that I'm... Oh, <laughs> yes. You're into it just like you uh, smoke two cigarettes a month, right? No, actually, not really. I know a little bit about the generality. Right. But you don't, you don't, you don't face, uh, you don't face the bed toward the power chakra or anything like that? Not really. All right, good times, baby. You haven't right, completely yeah. lost it. All right. We'll take a break. We'll be back. Yeah. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Drew. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Let's hop back on the phones. Speak to young Tori, who's 15. Tori? Hello? What's up? Hey. Hey. Um, this is my girlfriend. She's like, like, all screwed up and stuff. Uh-huh. How old is she? 15. Is uh -huh. she getting treatment? Mm, Help? Actually, no. I just confronted her mom this weekend. Good. What? Well, what's your girlfriend doing? Well, right. Like, I'm, I lived down there, and I had problems with my family, so I moved with my mom. Mm -hmm. And I went to visit, and her little brother said that she got a bunch of his little friends, and they went to the park, and they're like, she had, she was like making them kiss each other and kissing them. Oh, nice. She nice. thing with kissing girls, too. All right. What, what did you tell the mom? I just told her everything I knew, and she's like, this week I want to go back down there. We're going to talk to her or something. But Where's back down there? Oh, because I, I, I used to live in San Dimas, but now, is it Irvine? Right, Tori, I, I don't know what more you can do uh, other than actually taking yourself, her, yourself, to some sort of help. But you told the mom. The mom's responsible for this. Her behavior is sort of bordering on the criminal in terms of her abusing yeah, these kids. Yeah, exactly the mom said. And, molestation. and maybe you want to notify police, too, if, if it goes on, because you've got to get her, really save her from herself, quite literally. Yeah. And if mom doesn't do something, I, I would suggest you do something even firmer with this. Yeah. And listen, uh, as much as you may love her and want to help her, if she's out of control, mm -mm. Um, you don't have you don't go down with her. Right. Just uh, step back, let her get some help, and you move on. Please feel free to do that at uh, 15. Mm -hmm. Every, everyone should have that option. Andy? Yes. You're 27? Yes. What's up? My girlfriend has a problem uh, in her pubic area. Uh, she gets, the hair is really kind of dense, but the hairs are thin and they kind of knot up. And um, she's really afraid about, mm, I guess she's not into pain, so she doesn't like use wax or anything. But she also has like a mental problem with touching herself. Mm. And um, well, why, did, why doesn't why didn't, didn't she should wear it like a French braid or something so yeah, it doesn't right. get tangled up. You mean grooming herself? Yeah, she she really has a she doesn't like to touch herself. She she I made her show it to me once and she was so embarrassed cuz this was you know when we were first together and and uh it took like a few months for her to even get rid of you know, it was like a dreadlock. Um oh my god. But let me get this straight. Is it the hair uh is it the length of the hair or is it sort of the width of the hair? I mean, is it growing down her leg, or is it just growing out in length? It, yeah, it would, well... It's mad, no, it, he said. It comes from, you know, the pubic area, but it would grow long. It's like dreadlocks. It's yeah, I, yeah, yeah, but what, what I mean is, is with the grooming, it's like, if it was your, if it was, let's say it was your head we were talking about, yeah. Yeah. it'd be, you need a haircut, but we don't need to shave up the back of your neck and trim your sideburns. Yeah. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. It, it's right, like... 
over the vagina, right? Yeah, over. it's not. It's not okay. A, listen, no, I, I know. He, he, I think he knows what you're saying. Sir genius. The hair that's there is just long, and it's matted. But I. That but means, it's that not that she needs the bikini wax per se. It's that she needs the hair shortened. Yeah, I guess what's a safe way to do it, and then I need to convince okay. her how to do it. Well, what Andy's one of these guys, by the way. He'll never give you any satisfaction. Right. He'll never for a second let you think you know what he's talking about, or he knows what you're talking about. Does, how does that? How do those people work? Does she shower? Oh yeah, we shower together. And does she use soap on her genitalia? When uh, she's, she's got some special thing she uses. Yeah. So she, the whole deal is no. Do you guys have sex? Yeah. But you you just want her to cut the length of the hair. Yeah, but she. she yeah, has yes. Problem. Yes. Yes. She did it once, but she won't do it again. Okay. And you don't want her to wax the sides. She wouldn't do it anyway. Okay. Mm. And just, I'm trying to get a visual for the overall area and there. your question was how to do it safely and yet you know that she's done it before she, without she hurting herself it with scissors, well without hurting herself she wants to know is there a, a a liquid way or something that she could put it down there without the liquid stuff says don't put it down there yeah don't put it down there no. why won't she touch herself what's up with her well she had some i think she was raped by a couple of ex-boyfriends and she yeah. really like right. despises that part of her body well here's here's Oof. Here's well. Hold on. This is interesting. Oh, boy. Andy sounds like a, he's a handful himself. Mm -hmm. um, let me paint a picture here. Yeah. Um, sexually abused. Multiply. Yeah. Multiply growing up. Yeah. Then raped. Later. Later yes. on. No in doubt. life. No doubt. Now looks at that area as kind of a bad area, and doesn't want to make it enticing or presentable to males. Yeah. I mean, let Can't it even touch it. It's so horrible. Let it look like a vacant lot that's overgrown, so no one wants to buy it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Why, why, why mow the lawn when you don't want anyone to buy the house? Yeah, yeah. No curb appeal to that vagina. Mm. I'm kind of curious what's going on with Andy, though. Hey, Andy. Yeah. How are you doing in your life? Mm, got a full time job. Um, we've been together for a year and a half. All right. You, you guys don't have any kids, do you? No. Ooh, okay. Good times. Okay. Well, she's she's got some issues. Mm, yeah. And and I think it's a uh, time in her life. How old is she? She's twenty two. I think it's a uh, time that maybe she started addressing those issues. Well, I tried to get her to go to counseling, but it was really hard. We went three times and she didn't go again. She kind of needs to go on her own. Yeah. This isn't really about you and her. This is about her and what's going on with her before you. You know what I mean? What does that mean? What does she have to do with her? Well, she's a survivor, victim, survivor of abuse, and she needs to do some survivor work. And, and that is? That is individual therapy for a long time. Okay. And and once she gets some counseling and feels a little safer and works on some issues, then these sort of issues are going to clear up, too. Yeah. But in, until then, it's hard just to sort of focus on this part of her and this part of her life without addressing the stuff that's fueling this. Right. This isn't just about hair no. or her vagina. No, no, no. And, 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 and everybody, listen, please. I know, uh, I know you're stoned and you're trying to fall asleep, but listen. This is, this is life, baby. This is it. This mm -hmm. is the number one thing. Everybody has their own issues, mm -hmm. their own cries, mm -hmm. their own laments. And everyone gets really focused on those things. Like, this guy's focused on the hair yeah. that's between his girlfriend's legs. Meanwhile, she was, you know, she was brutalized. I'm sure she was abused. We for sure know she was raped, and something set that up, too, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. You're just going to focus on the hair. Why won't she cut it? I don't understand why. She's so freaked out. She doesn't want to touch herself. You'll go round and round and round, and eventually you'll be dead. 70 years from now but you'll be dead and you've got nowhere and you've right. got to know truths yeah focus on what's 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 feeding all of this stuff and all this stuff will go away and then when it comes to yourself just accept that it's all about you and when things happen in your life right accept responsibility for everything that's right unless a uh, safe lands on your head which I don't believe happens too much anymore. People don't seem to be hoisting safes, anvils, and pianos, pianos yeah. up to the ninth floor of any Manhattan apartments That's anymore. Right. It's more than seven seconds. Hey, Ken. Ken, yeah. turn the radio down. Don't worry about the delay. <laughs> What's up? Oh, is your radio down? It's off. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I just want, I listen to you guys often, and I hear people call in about crabs, and I just had a story I was going to fill you in on kind of funny okay um i 
gotten crabs and from some woman and I um uh, called a buddy and he told me just to go down to the um like the drug store and tell them what I had and they'd give me something. Every time I'd get in line, you know, there'd be like 10 women behind me and I was just kind of intimidated or scared, whatever. So I went home and I was kind of, you know, when you have some live little creature on your body, it's kind of scary. And, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm sitting there on the toilet and thinking about these crabs and sitting there with a pair of tweezers. And um, <laughs> I look over and in my shower is my um, flea and pig shampoo for my dog. Yeah. You know, and I'm sitting there thinking. Uh, Resourceful. Well, it didn't hurt the dog or anything, so I lathered up and um, <laughs> took care of it. And it worked, right? Worked perfect. No rash, no next day, everything gone. Can God bless you. I mean, you are a genius. I love this kind of stuff. <laughs> that is so true. I mean, what is that flea and tick stuff? Four bucks for, for a 16-ounce uh, container of it? Yeah. Uh -huh. And what is the crab stuff once you get the goddamn prescription? Because uh, as we've talked about, if you know they take away the prescription to the crab medicine, people will be chugging that stuff like Gatorade. Kids will get hold of it and uh, be hoofing it and getting high from it. I think of all the potential dangers it, there could be from people getting hold of crab medicine. Imagine what I would do if I got hold of some you know, go crab medicine. Yeah, I'd go on some kind of crab killing spree. <laughs> Stop me before I kill another pubic lie. Is it lice? What's yeah. the plural of lice? Lice louse, is the louse, blouse? Louse, yes. Pubic blouse. Or the singular. Anyway, this is good. And I know you're a doctor and you're not going to condone this, but if you think about it, do the math. You rub the shampoo on your dog, it kills ticks and yeah. fleas. Ticks and fleas aren't that easy to kill. Yeah. And some that's gonna a shampoo that's gonna kill a tick or a flea will probably kill a crab too. On the other hand, if you can wipe it all over your dog, it ain't gonna burn a hole in your skin. Let's just remind you. I'd like to remind you, Adam, of how this logic has led you down the path to putting Bondo on my face. Yes, that's that logic. Yeah, Bondo is a uh, two-part sort of uh, con concoction that they use to fill in dents and car fenders and uh, I once was working with some Bondo when I was working on a car and I noticed that there's a uh, resin and there's a catalyst and the catalyst uh, is a little orange rust colored goo that you, you mix a uh, drop in with the resin and it hardens the stuff up and I noticed the catalyst was 90% benzoyl peroxide which is a drying agent. And I noticed that uh, clear cell was 5 or 10% benzoyl peroxide. So I put some of that Bondo catalyst on a zit. And? Burn a hole in your face? No. <laughs> didn't really do anything. But I figure I got 90% benzoyl peroxide, brother. I ain't spending six bucks for an ounce and a half of 10%. I mm -hmm. got 90% here. Nice. Down at the Pep Boys. All right. I like this idea of putting dog uh, shampoo on your, on your crab-laden nuts. Rachel? Yeah. You're 19. Yeah. What's up? Um, well, I'm dating my dad's friend. What's, what's his best friend? How old is your dad? Did you say friends or friend? Friend. Okay. How old is your dad? My dad's 40. How old is his friend? 33. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of friend would do that, you think? I don't know. Ooh. What's up with her voice? Mm. You got oh. that you got that little girl voice, Rachel. Yeah, I know. You know, we worry about that. No, I'm 19. I go to USC. N that doesn't uh, ex doesn't satisfy us. Well, oh. what's that mean? I was born in 1980. I'm about to be 20. Yeah, but you sound 20. 9. Huh? You sound younger. No, I know. I get that a lot. I understand, but that that to us means something happened around the age of 9. Anything ever happened to you? No. No. Did your parents didn't divorce then? Um, no. They're still together. All right. No uh, rape, incest, abuse? No. All right, baby. Wait a minute. Your dad's 40. Okay. So you like his friend and you're dating him, having sex with him? Um, yeah. And what are you worried about? Your dad finding out? Yeah, but, like, his friend wants to take it further. What do you mean, take it further? Like, he's like, he keeps asking, would you ever consider marrying me and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. is it, what is this guy like? What's he do? Um, he's a doctor. Nope. Mm. Strike one. Yeah. What kind of doctor? He's an orthopedic surgeon. Aha! 
What do you mean, uh huh? A 19 year old. Mm hmm. Poindexter type. Is it, no. has got himself some young ass. He's how did you nuts. get? How did you get hooked up with somebody so much older than you? Well, like um, my dad's dad friend. Well, well, my dad would have like work parties, and he would come over and stuff, and we just started talking. And okay. And your dad doesn't know that you're dating him? No, because I just say that I'm going to spend the night at my friend's house. Do you, do you think your dad would freak if he found out? Yeah. Do you think yeah. your dad does he like this guy? Does he respect him? Well, we're really good friends. What about your mom? <laughs> well, my mom. Just listens to my dad. You can't. T you can't talk to your mom. No. She'll is, is there something culturally going on here? Because it seems like there's something I'm missing. Well, you understand what I'm asking? Do you share a heritage or something? What do you mean, like a heritage? Like, well, my mom's from H Honduras. Yeah. And my, and I guess, like, she's always been taught to do what the man says or whatever. Where's, where's your dad from? I gotta move to that Honduras. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Where's your dad from? My dad's from Ireland. And, oh, <laughs> yeah. So you do a little little drinking? Does he drink? Well, yes. Kind of, yeah. 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 And does this guy drink too? Um, no. Okay. And would you say, what's your dad do? Is he a doctor too? Yeah, he's an orthopedic surgeon as well. Yeah, a lot of doctors they always swing together. Yeah, I know. You don't have any time for anybody else. Yeah, I know, I know the guy was yeah. a uh, steam fitter or something, pipe fitter. So... Uh, and as you, would you say your dad's an alcoholic? No, he's not an alcoholic. He drinks, like, with his friends. Like, oh, okay. he doesn't drink during the week because I have little brothers and sisters. All right, all right. And he just drinks on the weekends with his Well, friends. Rachel, here's my, my thought about this. Okay. And Drew, you, uh, you back me up here. But only if you agree. Mm -hmm. Or even if you don't. All right. Uh, it, it, we we get the feeling that there's a little, something, little, something, something going on yeah. with Rachel. Yeah. Not wholesale abuse, but there's a little something. Subservient mom. Yeah. Dad does a little Dad's boozing. Alcoholic. All right. Dad's probably workaholic yeah. kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, friends sounds like an okay guy, but I'm not too sold on the guy. Mid thirties with a nineteen year old. The fact that he, the fact that he's trying to push things along, yeah, well, even it's, it's, that that's too fast for the. You're as a nineteen year old girl, you're supposed to be the one that's falling in love with him and, and pushing things along. He's supposed to be the one that's going, "Hey, baby, slow down." There's a big age difference, so I'm a little worried about the dude. Yeah. Uh, on he's the a great guy. Uh, hey, relax. All right. Hang all right. Hang on hang on the on the other, and and Rachel sounds a little confused, but yeah. on the other hand, there's not a any. You know, she's an adult. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's in college. He's, he's uh, managed to get through residency. He's, he's doing okay. Yeah. He's having a good life, and so I'm not going to put the kibosh on it. it, it just, Why don't it, you just take it slow? Don't reveal anything to Dad yet. How long has this been going on? Well, since I've been 18. Oh, Ooh, been going on for a little while. Almost two, two years. Is he, this guy seeing other people? No. What's this guy's story? Was he is he divorced or was he like a nerd in college? He's never been married because, like, I guess he ne he never had time to date while he was in college. Nerd. nerd. Yeah, nerd. Nerd. Yeah. Nerd. No, he's not a nerd. No, he was a you nerd. You don't see him as that now. That's what No, he was. now you see a guy driving the convertible Porsche yeah. and wearing the gold rope chain bracelet. Believe me, this guy's a nerd. You can't get through medical school without being a full-blown uh, geek. Uh, here, here. You should okay. see pictures of Drew. Oh. So yeah. now he's getting that piece of college tail he never had. <laughs> He wasn't getting any ass when he was in college. Yeah. Now he's going back to right the wrongs. Believe me, um, a fair amount of doctors, but almost every agent, <laughs> manager, publicist who's not gay. Oh, wait a minute. That's all of them. Every Hollywood type does this. Every Almost every successful guy does this. Yeah. Which is, in order to be successful, you need to be disciplined. And it's hard to Focus. be disciplined yeah. and focused and when party. you're... Uh, throwing touchdown passes and yeah. getting BJ's yeah. on Saturday night at Kagers. Yeah. No, these guys had these guys had time. I'll give you a good example. Show you show me a guy who's really good at magic. I'll show you a guy who didn't get laid in high school. Why? Takes a lot of time. a lot of Saturday nights yeah. at home, just working on those cards and that sleight of hand. So much discipline. Every one of my friends. The Rays and the Chris's of the world, the guys who are great at sports, the guys who got laid, the guys who had chicks. These guys don't know anything. Right. About anything. <laughs> About it. Yeah. No, little they have, little uh, careful techniques. No, yeah. It's <laughs> not that they're dumb guys, but they, they don't got 15 minutes worth of education under their belt. They've never said, they don't know another language. They don't play a, an instrument. They don't know nothing. They know nothing. <laughs> 
You know why? I'm sure they appreciate you bringing that out, by the way. You know, my, my buddy Chris, he, he, he's banging... Uh, he, when that guy was 15, 16, he was banging away uh, some chick in his apartment building. He was 15, 16. And her mom. Redemption. And her mom's sister. No. Yes. No. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. So, so let me no tell you something. You, you do good on this show. You, when you, your life was uh, priming for this. When you're 15 or 16 years old and you're nailing three chicks in your, you know, eight-unit apartment building and two of them are in their 30s oh and one God. is, you know, your age, you ain't home studying the violin or learning or uh, listening to uh, Berlitz tapes to speak uh, fluent Mandarin. It ain't happening. No. no, you get nothing. You get life. But back to back to Rachel, though. Uh, th- there is something not healthy about this situation. But on the love line scale, it may not be a big deal. But it, it will show itself with time. There All is right. something here. Something. Keep your eyes open. Yes. Take it slow. Don't say anything to Dad just yet. Something unhealthy. I mean, like really. Well, unhealthy. Getting something yeah, in her voice. Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll be back after this. Yeah. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That uh, be Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 L V E 191. All right. Lots of big time guests coming on this show starting tomorrow. We have yeah. the uh, cast from the first years at new uh, NBC show where they're uh, all lawyers. The only problem with the uh, TV with the lawyers and the doctors. Uh, present company excluded. Yeah. They're all horribly unattractive people. In real life. Yes. Yeah. Go sit down with some attorneys. You want to see, want to see some mutts? <laughs> oh, sure. You want to see what guys look like who really hit the books? It ain't going to be a bunch of hot, fresh-faced uh, 25-year-olds. I'll tell you that right now. Now, uh, balding guys with huge, huge noses. <laughs> huge. Huge beak-like noses. Uh-huh. No hair. Short and portly. That's a good portly. attorney. Portly. How that word? <laughs> portly. <laughs> <laughs> I miss portly. For all you youngins that know what portly means, that means fat. But I miss that. It's a good good word. Jenny? Yes. You're 17? Yes, I am. Um, I have a pretty straightforward question for Dr. Drew, actually. Um, I was just wondering if there's any possible um, dangerous or maybe even lethal effects between Accutane and ecstasy. Not that I'm aware of, other than the confounding uh, influence on mood. On mood. That, you know, as you know, Accutane has been a big deal about it causing depression and suicide, and certainly ecstasy can cause those right. problems. Right, I've heard so that. So that's the big issue. Um, because see. actually last night I heard um, some guy called in and said he couldn't sleep for a while, yeah. and he was on acne medication. So mm, kinda... Was that him? No, no, he was on a tetracycline or something. Okay. And then there, but there was one also along those lines about the Accutane and ecstasy, and I, I don't know of any reaction. All right. Let's talk to Josh. In, fa- in fact, let's think about it this way. A lot of kids on Accutane, a lot of kids doing ecstasy. Do you think we've heard of something by now? Josh? Yeah. You're 15? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going out with this girl. Mm-hmm. And she knows I really like knives. And now she wants me to get rid of them because she saw me, you know, beat up this guy for picking up my younger brother Sheldon. And, you know, she's worried that you know, I'm going to fly off the handle. Uh, we're worried, too. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. You, you, you know, when your name's Sheldon, you got to figure you're going to get picked on. A little bit. A little bit. Now, was the guy who picked on him your age or his age? He was my age. Oh, okay. And how old's your younger brother? He's 11. I see. Oof. So this guy's picking on him, so you went and picked on him. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's the code of the street. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, almost the same age as him, or older. And uh, you, what is, uh, tell me about your knife collection. Oh, I, I got like a lot of knives. You know, I got like over 40. I got, you know, butterflies and switchblades. Well, why? Got... Why? What do, you, what do you find so fascinating about knives? If, well, if you don't intend to use them, why do no, you have them? I collect them, and, you know, me and my dad, he used to collect them, too, until, you know, he like died. Kind of saying that? So he got in a knife fight and got killed? <laughs> no, he was in a car accident. Car accident. And... After a stab. <laughs> <laughs> he was being rushed to the hospital after a stabbing wound. Uh, don't make fun of Josh's poor dad who died in a car yeah. crash. How but dare I, I'm you? Just, listen, I'm, I'm making... I, I don't trust guys who collect knives either, but they can be very beautiful. And I've seen those guys. Josh, you see those guys on late night TV? Yeah. Those two fat guys with the mustaches? <laughs> and they're like... 
We got puck knives. We got Bowie knives. We got craft knives. We got utility knives. We got a leather man. And they pound them all into the stump. And they're like, $99 gets you 99 knives. Look at that. Look at that. That's chromoly. 205 steel. Stainless steel. Bob, hand me that wild turkey. I'll cut his head right off. There, look at that. Cuts hair. And look what it does. Shreds paper and goes through pineapple faster in Hawaii. There you go. And then, like... They just go nuts with the knives. Yeah, yeah. And this one, the Commando, the Commando Special. But there's, there's a the stage. one Rocky used in Rambo 5. This has wire, a slit of man's throat in the bottom. There's a compass built into it, a snake bite <laughs> kit, and a rototill. Isn't there, isn't there a stage about age 8 and 9 as a guy that you're just... You're just intrigued by knives. I was crazy into knives. Yeah. Yes. It was about nine. About, yeah, yeah, most people do outgrow it, Josh. Right. And if you have anger and impulse issues, why don't you at least, at least put several barriers between you and the knives? So if you do sort of spring a, you know, lose, lose a screw one night, yeah, uh, it, it's hard for you to get your hands on these knives. You so can't do, just like impulsively uh, grab them and bury them in the backyard and give the map to well, the neighbors. Put, put them in a case with some lock. Well, yeah, the, I got them in a padlock in my in my mom's room. Yeah, they lock right. the room that they're in, and then right. you know, to, Josh, you, you, you just give this guy a good ass whooping, or did you freak out and like start banging his head against the curb? I just you know went off on him. I saw him hit my brother, and that was it. And I just went off. You know, I, he he had a bloody nose and was walking off, and he just kind of ran off with a. Bloody all right. I don't know what all happened. Okay. Kind of yeah, it didn't go off the way you do, Adam. Bring it on! The guy with the baseball bats? Oh, yeah. This is a story you haven't told in a while. What was that story? Somebody... Oh, somebody you oh the guy hit me with the bat. Yeah. Yeah, I got in a fight with a bunch of guys out in the street once, and uh, i tell you, I got, uh, I got a bottle broken on me. And uh, had another guy hit me, uh, take a full swing with a baseball bat. And, uh, and then a bad knee or something, right? Well, it was really a situation, uh, Drew, where uh, I'm really not that tough a dude, but it just turned out that way. Just You seem tough. I seem tough by uh, what happened. Um, I was uh, leaving a party when I was in my youth, maybe about 19 or 20, make-out party where uh, everyone but me was getting laid. <laughs> <laughs> and as I was leaving... Uh, the chick who I didn't want to have sex with who, because she was crazy told the uh, tough guys who were pulling up to the party that oh, yeah. uh, I hit her. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'd had arthroscopic nerg- uh, nerg- arthroscopic surgery on my uh, knee about uh, th- about three days earlier. I should really do a spot for that. And uh, the guy uh, followed me out in the street and he kept talking and I kept telling him uh, my knee was broken up and I just, you know, I just took the brace off. And it, I, I literally, I had stitches in my knee from where they did the uh, arthroscopic surgery. And I said, I, I can't participate in any of this kind of fighting. I, my knee's banged up. And this one guy, one big husky Mexican guy, he kept pushing. And then he said, I said, listen, I can't fight. My knee is messed up. And he said, I'm going to break your other knee. And I said, oh, I was a little drunk. Imagine that. Yeah. And I said, uh, I said, okay. And this is a huge mistake. I said, okay, there was like th- this one big dude and five of his friends. And I said, it's just me and you, right? Because oh. you're going to kick my ass. You got no problem with me, right? You're going to break my other knee? So here's the deal. It's just me and you and your friends. You stay out of this. Oh, it's, if, if you agree to that, fine. I said, oh, no problem. So we went out to the street. And uh, me and this dude started fighting, and uh, I just started beating him up because I, I'd been, I was like uh, boxing, kickboxing stuff, and I was just hitting this guy a lot, and he wasn't hitting me. And eventually I whacked him, and he sort of fell back into his group of friends, and he wouldn't come back. And uh, then the mistake started with the taunting. Mm, you. <laughs> yes, this was now me saying, hey, buddy, you wanted it. I ain't done. Come on. I thought you were going to break my other knee, you puss. Bring it on out. You begged me to come out here. Now I'm out here. Come on, pussy. Get back because I ain't done with you. And about halfway into that taunt, <laughs> a beer bottle broke on me. Now, the guy threw it, but it still broke on me, and it broke right on my shoulder. Huh. Didn't hurt at all. Didn't cut me. Wow. Didn't leave a scratch. Just boom. Broke right on my shoulder, just like out of a movie. And then I felt a full swing from an aluminum baseball bat on my knee. Guy came up behind me and took a full swing. But he hit me on the good knee, and he hit me behind the knee. Mm -hmm. And he hit me about six inches above my knee joint, right in the sort of meaty part of my thigh. And all I did was sort of curtsy. But he took a full swing. It just 
it just got me in the best possible place. So they just broke the beer bottle on me, and they just hit me with the thing. And then they all piled on me and hit me with something, like big uppercut or something. And I had blood was coming out. My lip was split open. But I felt pretty good. <laughs> the, the beer, this guy never hit me, really, the guy I beat up. Yeah. The, uh, the, the bat didn't do too much. It just stung a little. And the beer bottle didn't even cut me. Yeah. And the lip was just, uh, it felt a little stinger on my lip. Yeah. And now I was angry. So now... I found the guy who hit me in the lip, who was like the kung fu guy of the group. <laughs> it was great. It was like out of a movie. And me and this guy squared off for like a kung fu theater in the middle of the street. It was like 2 in the morning in uh, Studio City somewhere. And we were just trading kicks and punches and all that kind of stuff for a long time. And eventually uh, the cops showed up. But these guys were convinced I was a maniac. <laughs> Because they're like, they broke a bottle, they hit me with a bat, they, they took on the two tough guys. And when I was done, I was fine. I was like, I wanted more. I had adrenaline pumping. I guess I was drunk. And uh, my buddy Ray, who you now know, I was looking for the dude who hit me with the bat. Terry Mosier was his MFer's name. Oh, wow. Hit me with that bat. He knew my knee was bad, and he took a full swing from behind on my knee with a baseball bat. I mean, you could understand that I want a little revenge on this guy who was supposed to be out of the picture while I went at it with his friend. I knew this dude was in the neighborhood. And I was looking for him for months. And six months later, I was at a New Year's Eve party in a bathroom. <laughs> this really sounds like I got a lot of testosterone. Making out with a chick oh, in a bathroom. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know what was going oh, on. Oh, man. Life was good back then. And I was really getting it on, like, in, in, in my friend Umgad. <laughs> Umgad. Umgad Abu Zamzam's bathroom. And there's a pounding on the door, just a violent pounding. And I said, uh, hey, hey, we're in here. Leave me alone. And it was Ray. Yeah. Ray was outside the door. Bang, bang, bang. Ray, it's Ray. Let me in, man. He was, like, screaming at the top of his lungs. He was drunk. I said, Ray, leave me alone. I'm in the bathroom. And the girl's like got her panties around her ankles and stuff. Oh, no. Let me in. You're going, to, you're going to see this, man. You're going to get out of here. I said, Ray, Ray, please. And he's like, get out, get out, get out here. All right, pull, you know, like, pull the pants up, get our ass together, open the bathroom door. He's holding Terry Mosher. Mm. He found Terry Mosher was at the party. This is six months later. He's got this kid by the scruff of the neck. This guy's like 130 pounds, and he's like uh, shaking like he's like a like a fawn, like oh, in, like uh, when Bambi's mom got <laughs> shot. You know, he's like, holy Christ! And I'm the maniac dude who took on all his friends and got hit with the bat and the bottle and stuff and wanted more. And this and my you know, friend Ray's 220 pounds. He's holding the guys by the back of the neck, and this guy's just like going insane. He's like wetting himself, and uh, I was like drunk and had a boner, so I was like. Uh, <laughs> But, yeah, get out of here. Uh, so Ray just like threw the guy back. It was like he pulled him out of a pond and threw him back. Uh, and then a year after that, the big Mexican dude oh. moved into my apartment building. Oh, And I was standing out on the street selling my car when this dude was physically moving into the building. Van pulling up, unloading the furniture. You greet him? I'm standing out there in a pair of shorts and Zoris. Hey, neighbor, how you doing? Moving into the building? Dude, come Dude, now, now by this point, he's 300 pounds, but it looks like he's been on, on steroids and in the gym. I'm going, man, this is a big mother effing Mexican dude. It's moving into the building. And that guy goes, I know you, man. <laughs> and I go, yeah, would you play some Pop Warner football or something? <laughs> he goes, no, no, we know each other. And I'm like, well, I, uh, yeah, you don't look familiar to me, but uh, yeah, if, if it comes to you, yeah, tell me. I don't know. Would you play Little League? Where'd you grow up? Around North Hollywood? And I, I'm just standing out there, and he's moving his stuff in, and he goes, we fought, man. I'm like, huh? Member out? And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and the dude, it was, now it was funny because the guy was 100 pounds bigger than I am and uh, looks like he'd been doing nothing but pumping iron since the last time I saw him. But I kicked his ass last time I saw him. So I think he was like, he still had a little element of freak out. Yeah. So he so kind of left me. That's why he was working out ever since. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of left me alone. Yeah, so who knew? I'd run into everybody. That's their call. All right. Uh, there's even more to this story, I know. I'm by sorry. the way. I'm sorry to break the, the, the zen here, the, yeah. the, the mantra you're in. Yeah. Katie. Hi. Hi, what's up? You're 19. Yes, I am. What's up? Um, actually, I have a friend who recently, actually last semester, about five months ago, was diagnosed with, um, it's not bipolar, it's the other one. I always forget what it's called. Borderline? Borderline, yes, thank you. Okay, yeah. it says it on the screen. <laughs> and, um... She's been going to therapy. She's been in and out of the hospital several times, and she mm -hmm. cuts herself. Great. And um, she's actually in an outpatient therapy program right now, mm -hmm. and it hasn't started yet. A group and program. I'm sorry? A group program, like a hospital program. Yeah. yeah. It's like a study. Um, 
she doesn't have to pay for it, which is good because mm-hmm. her insurance ran out. Okay. Um, What's your, what is your question? If there's anything like my friends and I can do to help her. No, this is a very serious chronic psychiatric condition. And you can be good friends and be available for, to her, but uh, it's going to be a lot of chaos until things settle down. Okay. And uh, you keep, you know, uh, perhaps she'll have a tendency to, to go into drugs and alcohol and to get into chaotic relationships and maybe sexually act out. And you sort of help her contain her behaviors maybe. That might be useful. Okay. Okay? All right. Thank you. Uh, all right. Now, what were you doing at 19, by the way, while I was uh, rolling around the street with uh, Mexican guys? Oh, yeah. and I, I hit was with uh, depressed. Yeah. Had my pants around my ankles, too, around most of the time, like oh, you. Oh, good. Good times. Uh, living in New England. Mm. Uh, studying my ass off. Same life. Uh, <laughs> yeah, didn't go outside much. All right. It's pathetic. Good times. Mm. We'll be back. <laughs> got to go high and close, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Good times, everybody. Right. Yeah. Same friends you hung out with, right, Drew? Yeah, all these are like my friends, yes. Especially at 1920 when I was having such a good time. Yay, love line. All right, let's uh, hop back on the phones and speak Jesse. to Jesse. What? 25. Jesse? Yeah. What's up? Hey, guys, how's it going? Good. Love your show. I listen to it every night. I'm out towing. Great. <laughs> towing? I'm a tow truck driver. Oh, you beast. <laughs> don't, don't you guys listen to the radio when you're out? Huh? Don't you listen to the radio when you're out towing? Well, yeah, but I mean, I listen to you guys every time I'm out, you know, at the time. Let uh, me ask you a quick towing question, Jesse. Sure. If, if you're pulling, now you tow um, commercial vehicles, or I mean, uh, uh, residential vehicles. And yeah, the regular cars and stuff. Everyone private. wants to do a commercial, but yeah. Okay. If, if you, if, if, if someone called to tow a car. I know where you're going. Like, let's say the guy was illegally parked at some 7-Eleven or convenience store, and then he was at some nightclub across the street. Mm-hmm. Just, just, cool, just making just want, up a story. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you went to tow the guy's car, and he ran out there right as you pulled up. <laughs> How much palm greasing does it take for you to keep driving? What's he got to slip you? Oh, yeah. Wow. And who are you, and who are you accountable to? Who, who are you accountable to? What's to prevent well, the him? Person, who, uh, the only person that I could actually listen to is the person that called it in. That would have to be a private property owner. You have to listen to I him. have to listen to you, the You can't property. say, hey, the guy just drove away as I was uh, driving. It would, be, it would be up to the private property owner whether I actually take the car or not. If, if I'm, like, on the hook, if it's already on my hook. Right. Okay? And uh, and the guy comes out, I, I actually, if it's already on the hook, I have to go. Why? That's just, it's the rules. That's well, who's the rule? The, the, the company. Your, your company. company. Yeah. So you right. lose well, your job. Of the company or else I get fired. Right. But I'm saying, if, what if the guy said, here's 50 bucks, put it down and tell your dispatcher it was gone when you pulled up? Oh, man. You guys are really putting me out of the well, but that, That's the question. Is is, is there some... Um, Adam has this question. I want to know how much to bribe guys if this happens to me again. Um, I don't know. 50 bucks would probably do it for me, but I'm desperate. <laughs> okay. It's 100 bucks for... The, 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 the guy that was uh, hassling you. Jesse, I drove my uh, BMW M3 right off of one a tow truck. Right off it. Was F- it a flatbed? No, nope, not a flatbed. It was one of the kind of s- the two prongs slipped under the rear tires. Just the regular record kind. Uh, yep, I unlashed it and drove right off it. How did you... Well, I was, Three, it wasn't moving, I hope. No, it was starting to move. I drove right off it, three feet in the air. Well, then that guy didn't really hook up very well. No, he hooked, he hooked up. I unhooked him. Yeah, you and a friend did, right? So yeah, and that guy can kiss my hairy ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, good times. There you got your money, buddy. <laughs> All right, so anyway. Anyway, uh, my question is, I want to know if I'm a nymphomaniac. I mean, I'm, uh, it's just with my wife. I don't want, like, other women or anything like that. But mm. I'm constantly asking for sex and wanting sex for my How often is that constantly? Uh, at least every night. So, very least. And is that sort of your rhythm, your biological rhythms? You need to do something every day? Yeah, at, at least. At least every day. At least and every so, day. And it's always been that way. Uh, ever since we've been going, we've been at, we've been together since high school. Are you just are you really into your wife? Yes, I am. Yeah. Wow. Am I just like a complete horn dog, or am no. I an infomaniac? No, no, no. You're neither. Uh, and your wife, what's sort of her rhythm? She is twice a year. <laughs> she gets raped the other three hundred. I, I, I just feel like days. that she, she's getting to the point where I, where I want sex, and it's like actually like bugging her. Well, I, I, believe me, the, the, you know the, the Mars Venus show I do. This is a topic we talk about like every second show. The women, women, men, when they're into their wives, are are 
are more active this way. They, right. they they're like at least three or four times a week. And women, it's uh, yeah, once a week. Yeah. It's like it's plenty too much. Now, is she? Here's what's going to happen, though. And this is a little problem now, and we'll see if we can address it. But as the years wear on, her her graph will start going up, yeah. and yours will start heading down, and you guys will cross. Maybe you'll probably be thirty four when it crosses, but at some point it should cross. And what's the what's up with like being crazy sexual for your wife? You've been married for seven years. It's like twice a day, every day. I mean, where's that's that? That's what you want. That's what you want. I know you want yeah. it, but who the hell could do that? I can't. I, I still, I still am like, I, yeah, I no. still, got, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, well, yes. but, but you're passionate, yeah, <laughs> passionate well, man. I, I want to please her. I mean, I'm really into pleasing her and seeing the expressions. On okay, her face. No, All I, right. but you're also, you're, you, you, she really flips your cookie, and and that's sort of what you. It's an unhealthy thing in reality, but Kidding. it's what you want in your relationship. It really, it it sustains you. Oh, okay. Too. All right, but here's the deal. Let's see if we let's see if we can't trim that down. Well, that's the point. You need to compromise. You got a little too much energy. You need to compromise. You need to find other ways to sort of manage yourself. And you need to sort of help. One of the, the, the hallmark, the, the sort of absolute rule you've got to hold with yourself is no begging, bugging, pushing, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Nothing makes a woman push right. her way more. Drugging is fine, but no begging. But I, you know, one uh, th- Let me make a suggestion, then we're moving on. I, I have one important that no. One. No, tomorrow night. No. Here's the deal. Yeah. You're driving a tow truck, you're 25. Yeah. Why don't you take some extra energy and focus Sub- it sublimate. into sublimate. into education, yeah. into a career, a different yeah. career? I, he obviously wants to do more than drive a tow truck. Yeah. He's obviously an intelligent guy; can hear it in his voice. Jesse, take some of that energy and take take an hour, extra hour a day, and focus it into something to kind of tire you out and rechannel your energy. And, and let me just say, here's another thing that, that I've discovered from this Mars Venus show is that women really don't accept how men are. They really don't understand. They do not get how much that biology operates. And you've got to sort of sit her down and help her say, this is, it's not, I'm not bugging you. I'm not a horn dog. This is just me. It's my biology. It's what I need to do. Mm-hmm. And she needs to sort of just get uh, comfortable with that. You're a passionate, passionate man, are you not, Drew? Yes, yes. Still hot for your wife after yeah. uh, 10 years of marriage and, and, and kids years of dating, and yeah. uh, dating That's and be, being with her for how many years now? 18 years. 18 years? years yeah. 18? Yeah. 17, 18 years? Still uh, crazy hard on mm-hmm. for wife, huh? Mm-hmm. I don't trust that. Not at yeah, but all. it's a good thing. Oh, it's good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's, you know, I mean, you know, heroin makes you feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people are high on heroin. No, it's good. I wish I had a, a drop of that. Stacy? Hello? You're 21. What's up? Yes. Hi. Okay. This is really complicated. But I've been with my boyfriend for like eight months. And the first couple of months that we started dating, he, okay, well, he's got a baby's mom. He's got a one-year-old daughter. And the first couple of months we started dating, he... um went over to her house every weekend because she's got this, she's like psycho, I don't know what's wrong with her, but for some reason she thinks that he can't spend time with his daughter alone, so they they gotta spend time together, like as a family, even though they're not together. Has the court ordered this? No. You sure? This is her way You sure? Uh Huh? You sure? Yeah, Yeah, I'm positive, I'm positive. This is just her way of thinking, so for the longest time, um, he'd go over there and he would cheat on me with her. Oh, because the, the only way he could see his daughter... Oh, Stacy, like, please. <laughs> You're believing this crap? Okay, but... See, I had to screw my wife because I just know I could see my daughter. Oh, okay, my I, God. I, I know he's listening right now, on the, so I'm sorry, but... Mm-hmm. Um, the only reason why I believed him is because I saw that my, my older sister had done with this with her baby's dad for, the lo- for like five years. I because mean, she was trying to get back with that guy. I know exactly. I know she wants. I know that his baby's mom wants to get back. Yeah, with but that's him. what your sister was up to too. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, well, that you, did did that man, her ex husband, have a, a girlfriend? Yeah. That he was cheating on with his ex wife. Yes. Right, yeah, it's just touche. You, right? you want it's a screwed up situation. <laughs> <laughs> but my question is: is he hasn't been cheating on me? Because I mean, I've I've talked to her and she says nothing happened or whatever, whatever. <laughs> since the last incident was. That was a long time ago. Yeah, but right. The thing is, is that he continues having to go over there and mm-hmm. like go to her house and yeah. Sometimes she'll just be like, "Okay, well, I'm going out. Come, come watch my daughter." Yeah, right. And what's, your, what's your question? My question is, why won't he go get visitation? Yep. I, I mean, I've, I've talked to him about it, and he just won't do it. Yep. 
There you go. Stacy, what, what are you, 400 pounds and missing a leg? <laughs> you can't just go find some regular guy who's, like, single, <laughs> who'll treat you decently. No. Is it, are you that effed up? Is there, are you that flawed? What's or, wrong or with do you? you? Feel, do you feel that bad about yourself that you put up with this crap? No, it's just he wants to. Stacy? Because I bet he's on his way over here right now listening. Stacy? What? A person that feels good about themselves wouldn't put up with this crap. They would insist. I know he cares about me. I know Stacey, he me. they would insist. He wasn't sure whether well, then he's got to behave accordingly. That you have Listen, who gave Jesus a- loves you, too. Is he banging his ex? He hasn't. He hasn't for the longest time, though. Yeah, All right. He's not being respectful of your feelings and not doing what's necessary he, to create structure. After with- he got popped for doing that, yeah, yeah. he's got balls the size of uh, Montana going over there right. and hanging out again. Yes. And he knows you'll put up with it. And I don't know what's wrong with you, Stacy, but you're 21. Come on. Do you really want to get saddled? Who cares? <laughs> you want to get saddled with all this crap at 21? Is no, it's just... All right. Good. No. <laughs> then don't. Yes, then don't. Exactly. Here's my new plan. When I start asking people, do you want to stay with a guy who's abusive? Do you want to get pregnant? When they go, no, hang I, up. I hang up before the butt, and then we technically went out with no. That's good. We'll be back. Another fantabulous love line uh, in the can. I want to thank um, my parents and Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> so, hey, we're going to do listener, some listener yeah, love lines coming up. Yeah, uh, let's not promote that yet. Just it's if you be for a few look, weeks. Well, Ann asked me to just mention if you'd oh, like tonight? to talk to Ann Wilkins and Ingold at the K Rock in Los Angeles at eight one eight five six seven one zero six seven, and be an in studio guest. We're going to talk about raves. We'll have been to a bunch of raves. We're interested in learning about that. So, give uh, her what's call. her name? Ann Ingold or Ann Wilkins. Same check? Ann Ing- Winkle- Wilkins Ingold. Same okay, check. Sure. You're, you're producer. Glad there's a lot of clarification yeah. there. So until next time, this is Adam Crowley for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Ingold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.